Hi guys, Peter Rondo here with Sweet Adventures. Today I want to talk about DIY solar projects. So a lot of people see some of these high-end solar projects like the dry campers. They're awesome. Mike and Leanna do an amazing job and what they do is an art. Um, I can't do it yet, but I can install our solar system and my point today is to try to show several different types of DIY solar installs and hopefully we get progressively closer to Mike and Leanna. I know they're kind of the high bar, but uh, we're gonna do our best to, to make a functional system and generate power from the sun. And we're here live in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the Full-Time Families Rally at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. I know that's a lot of words, but if you're interested in hearing any more about that, I'm gonna post a couple links below to the uh, Full-Time Families website so you can see it. It's a membership-based organization for traveling families like ourselves and where we meet other people. As you can see, there's a, a lot of other families here. These are all RVs full of families. And uh, I'm also gonna post a link below to Ben from Intentional Adventure. He did an awesome uh, video on what to expect when going to a rally. So I'll post those as well. All right, before we get started, I, want, I just wanted to say a disclaimer. Uh, learn a little bit about the systems before you just start because there is obviously wiring involved, there's electricity, you can burn stuff down if you do it wrong. Um, I personally had my system designed by Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. So after I got all the parts list, I just bought it from them. They sent it to me. And the only thing I had to buy was like glue, some screws, some tape, little things like that that we needed for our install. But besides that, I just connected pieces together. And my contact Adam was very helpful in getting all those pieces together. So the first system I want to show you is ours. Like I told you, it was already uh, built together by Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. So they spec'd it out to meet our budget, and we did three, two, sorry, two 330 watt panels right there, as you can see. They are wired in series, which means the positive goes to the negative from, yeah. Which means the positive on one goes to the negative on another, and then they run together with just two wires, positive and negative, as you can see. I put a little red uh, electrical tape on it so you can tell. I ran it along the roof, don't mind the, mind the shadows, to a big disconnect that they spec'd out for me. So it's on right now because it's running and through the roof. And these are all watertight connectors so we shouldn't have to worry about anything. And I personally jumped in the forums for my model RV to figure out how to get the wires down to the basement. There is a wall in mine that could act as a chase and I jumped on there, talked to a couple guys and figured out where that was. So that was actually a pretty easy part because it's besides drilling a hole in the top plate it was pretty easy to get the wires to the basement. Okay for our system we went with a multi plus two which takes both legs of the 50 amp and inverts it from there. So my shore power cord goes right to this inverter and then a power cord goes straight from the inverter to the panel. And obviously the battery cables go in there. I went with three Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries. I went with a smart shunt, a fuse holder that will not stay together, which is why it's duct taped and zip tied. I went with a servo, which is the wireless interface for the Victron stuff. And you can see I've got a battery disconnect and a uh, smart battery protect as well. So that's the battery part of my system. I know it's not neat and it's not up to the dry camper spec, but it is functional and I did it at a day and a half in a rally. So that was my goal is just to get it done and functioning. I'll show you the solar stuff as well. All right, so I had to crawl in my underbelly to show you this, but this is my solar stuff. Again, functional and not pretty, but definitely works. I left all my coil long because I do plan to go back and neaten it up at some point. But for now, it's working and I'm producing, I don't know, as much solar as it can produce, I guess. I think I saw upwards of 550 watts yesterday. We'll see what it does today. All right, I just wanted to talk about this display that comes with the um, servo. This is pretty cool. It gives you all your 
readings right away. Right now we're getting 400 watts of solar. Batteries are at 65%. AC loads 27 watts. DC loads 30 watts. And no shore power. That's why there's nothing there. Because we are dry camping. And that, well, another nice feature of this is that you can actually... Oops, wrong button. You can actually change. You can do it here too, but you can do it here. You can change the input setting. So right now we're dry camping my generator. I set it at you know 25 amps input. But if I was on a 50 amp, I'd just go ahead and adjust it up to 50 amps. Or if I was on a 30 amp, do a 30 amp or a 15 amp. And the, the inverter will actually, oh, I think they call it power share with the batteries, and make up the difference up to 3,000 watts. So a pretty cool feature. Uh, not necessary. You can do it with like a smart uh, dongle, I believe is what it's called. You can do a lot of these settings and see it. But we wanted the display, we wanted to be able to monitor it without our phone, so this is what we got. So the next one we're going to go look at is Mr. Luke Hag, right there, like Hagen does. Just wanted to make one comment, if you are doing this and you're doing anything roof related, check out one of these ladders, they certainly make getting up and down a lot easier, and they fold up very small. So you can take us take it with you. I know that the RV ladders over there, they work, but ours is pretty high off the ground, so we don't use it very often. All right, I'm here with Luke Haig. Am I saying that right? Haig. Yeah. Hey. Hey, well, look at this. All right. So what do you have for panels up here? So these are what you would call a kind of residential slash industrial size panel. They're 39 inches wide and the something over 60 inches long I can't remember yeah they're they're big um, you know four of them how many four of them they're what? 375 watts each oh wow they are what they call bifacial panels meaning they can actually also uh, collect some solar from underneath if the light is reflecting off the white roof if you look up close on you can actually see unlike most monocrystalline panels you can actually see right through these you can yeah see wow. that in my hand down there yep so my old panels were not the bifacial and you couldn't see right through them like that. So it helps keep them cooler, which is important for solar. Um, and also why I raised them up a little bit more this time so I can clean underneath them. Oh yeah, those are higher brackets than um, mine for sure. Yeah, and they're riding real stable. Now, uh, how did you wire these up? Are these parallel, are they series or what? I did, I did these two in the back in series and I did the front two in series. And then I run them together into two separate um, charge controllers, Victron uh, 150s. Um, down below so that way um, if I have the shade on this set in the back or the set farther up it won't affect the other two so it's kind of like a more of a series parallel configuration yep um, and um, so with that said you've got to run two separate um, two separate sets of wires uh, down to charge controls you can't use one that's kind of the downside of it but you know I just kind of explained the upside and what I did after I wired in series parallels I ran the four cables um, that little black panel back there is um, the top of the refrigerator vent area behind it. Okay. And a lot of times on Class A's, and well, even on a lot of rigs, if you have this that. This is a good tip, of, listen. Yeah, if you have that, if you have a refrigerator with a vent cover on top and you want a good way to get your wires down, uh, down below into your basement or, or just down, uh, down lower and not have to drill any holes and have any hard time fishing wires, that's a real good solution. You just can take out the four screws and pop it off and sometimes it takes a little bit of work just to get the, the hole drilled or get through that there's a screen underneath there and so I kind of cut a hole in the screen with wire snips and then put the wires through with a grommet so they don't ever rub and then put some like silicone in there to kind of seal it back up again keep any pests or bugs out of there yep and that's a pretty easy way to get it down you know the seven feet or so um, down to your basement area all right here we are down in the bottom you know before we jump to the inverter just show you where these wires come oh from. this is awesome so we talked that there was all my uh, wires come down from the panel yeah, you can kind of see the box right and there at the top you should have uh, an access door like this one down below oh. uh, I've got mine wrapped up in here to protect them yeah so once I got them down in here then I just I put this protective uh, conduit on it and I kind of just slid it up and taped it as I went and that, that kind of protects it but you can see there's like tons of room to run it down behind the fridge no that is an awesome tip uh, but then down below here is where um, the inverter is. Now it's a bit, um, <laughs> it's a bit busy in here. You get down this low. This is our home. We are it's both full timers. Home. But I have the uh, the Xantrax 
uh, Freedom SW3012. It's a 3000 watt uh, 12 volt input inverter. Um, it's made by Schneider Electric. And uh, you got four aught gauge cables coming in from the battery. Nice big cables. It's got the automatic gen start okay. up here. So um, it's about the only main component I have that's not the Victron, but it was already here and it, it just uh, it works quite well. So and it's a good quality inverter, so I've just stuck with it. I didn't have to really change a whole lot in here, just kind of swap out the batteries. Cables come down from the panels. I decided to use this compartment um, to put my charge controllers in. So one I already had from my previous rig and then I bought an additional one that's just the same and I like having redundancy too. That's another thing. I could have gone to a single larger charge controller but physically it would have been too large to fit in this space but I'd also lose any kind of redundancy in my system. So if for some reason one fails um, I would have yeah, I would only use half my solar and not all of it. Um, but this is the compartment. It's actually got my, my chassis batteries in it, but it had the space here for these. So these are my wires coming in from the panels right up top here in the corner. And they run into the charge controllers, which will manage, because they come in about 80, 90 volts and how many ever amps it is, but it's a much higher voltage than what I need. So this drops it down to the appropriate voltage to then come through here. And I, have, well, I should say first, I have breakers coming in. So if I ever want to cut off the, the solar coming into here, and work on anything, I can just pop both of these breakers. And uh, they're both 60 amp in this case. Usually, since this is a 50 amp charge controller, you would wanna do a little bit more than 50 and the next step up is 60 for your breakers. So those are both 60. Um, anyway, so the power goes through there, into the charge controllers, and then um, back out through, uh, I got a 200 amp fuse here. That runs over to my house battery. Um, on, on the proper side of the cutoff switch so I can still use again utilize my cutoff switch if I want to isolate everything there and then I just have a negative cable that runs to the other side over here so this was all kind of here from the chassis manufacturer and the coach manufacturer um, and then I just added these these components here all right Luke here you go this is our thank gift you, to you thank, you, thank you so much appreciate it. some keem lime fudge made just for your family you know that's my favorite flavor <laughs> <laughs> that's right okay that's right